Antakara na tat vritti sakshi chaitanya vigraha ananda rupa sakya sanking nat manang prapadyase. Why do you not recognize your own self, which is an embodiment of eternal bliss essence, the witnessing light that illumines the inner equipments and their functions? Satyananda Svarupam Tisakshinam Jnana Vigraham Chintayatmataya Nityam Yaktva Dehadigam Diham Give up the intellectual misconception that the self is the body, etc., and always meditate upon and think yourself to be the eternal knowledge bliss, the witness of the intellect, a sheer mass of pure knowledge. Urupa dimanyata pindas tato nat maghata divat viyada dimahabhuta vikaratvat the body is not the self. Like the pot, etc., the body also has form, etc. And again, the body is a modification of the great elements such as akasha, just like the pot. Namaste. So, why aren't you enlightened? Why don't you recognize your own self? That's what this teacher is saying to the student. You don't recognize yourself. Why? Because as discussed in verses 9 and 10, you don't have the proper definition for the terms. So when you hear, Thou art that, tattvamasi, you don't get it. Now, I know everybody believes that they know what the words mean, but belief is not fact. You have been hypnotized by schooling to repeat phrases in social contexts and think that you know what they mean, but actually you don't because you cannot recite the definition of the words. This is a pivotal, crucial point. How can you learn from the scriptures if you don't know the meaning of the words? Knowing the meaning of the words means you can recite the definition of the words. If you can't recite the definitions, you don't know what the word means. And that is true for 99.99% .99 of all the people in the world because they don't read the dictionary. They don't understand their own language. Even the language that they think in internally, they don't understand it. It's weird, huh? So what are you then? What is the self actually? The witness, that which is aware. Aware of what? The body, the senses, the sense objects, and the mind. Well, people would say, but that's me. That's my body. See, and this is another hypnotic trance. People have named this body. Your name is such and such. And then it's recorded in some records and filed in the state's records. And then forever afterwards, you are known by that name. That is your identity, your identification. That's exactly the correct terminology. But you 
are not the body nor the names. You are that which is aware of it all. Now, you could say, well, I don't see any awareness. I don't see any self. I don't see any Brahman. Of course not, because you are a Brahman. Tatram asi. You are the Brahman. You are the one who is aware. So you can't see yourself. The closest you can come is when you read the scriptures, and the scriptures describe the self as that which is aware of everything. So you see, it's a conundrum. It's a problem for people to get it. Otherwise, they would be enlightened the first time they hear, you are Brahman. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Got it. Right. <laughs> you are already Brahman. You've always been Brahman. You've never been anything else but Brahman. But you have been hypnotized to accept the body the body's name, the body's senses, the sense objects revealed by those senses, called possessions and so on, and recognize these as yourself, but not to recognize the one who is aware of all this. That is illusion. That is the maya. That is the sleep that keeps us from awakening to the reality. So it would be great if simple intellectual knowledge of this was enough, but it's not. It has to become a feature of one's being. Now, we talk about being and ontology and ontics and related topics on this channel since the beginning, over 10 years, like 12 years now. And people still don't get it. I can tell from the comments that they don't get it. How is that? Because they keep talking about other things and not about the self. They keep talking about the objects of consciousness and not about consciousness itself. They keep using the terminology that confuses consciousness with being. But consciousness is not being. It's different. So you can be aware intellectually, oh, yes, I am Brahman, <laughs> and be a total sleep, total unawareness of your real self. It's quite possible. So then, how does one become aware of what the real self is? Well, you have to use discrimination, viveka. Viveka means separating the permanent, the eternal, from the temporary, the non-eternal. And if you go through this neti neti, huh? rejecting the non-eternal, then whatever is left is going to be the eternal, based on the principle of the remainder. So if you reject the gross body, the senses, the mind, and even the intelligence, what is left? Only awareness. Not awareness of something, but just pure awareness all by itself. That is Turiya. See, that is Brahman. That is the self. I don't know how many times I'm going to have to say this before you get it. I don't know how many times you're going to have to hear it if you study the scriptures, which you should. Huh? But this is the key. You have to keep hearing 
Keep discussing with others and with yourself even the tenets of this philosophy, a Dwaita philosophy. And one of these days, it's going to sink in and you're going to get it. Oh, I am that which is aware of everything. Oh, I get it. And in that moment, your consciousness will change. In that moment, you become enlightened. So this is why Ramana Maharshi says, you cannot see the self. You can only be the self. Because the self is the seer. Just like the eye cannot see itself without a mirror. In the same way, the self cannot see itself. There is no mirror that will reveal it except the mirror of knowledge, the mirror of the scriptures, especially the Upanishads. Now, all this is moot without the qualifications. In other words, you can study the scriptures, you can read and hear and discuss this philosophy forever, but you won't get it until you become qualified. And we've talked about this on numerous occasions. Those qualifications, really, the essence of them is to reject the passionate life of chasing sense objects and desires. When one drops all those activities, only then one can cognize the self. Why is that? Because every time you initiate an action based on a desire, you confirm the misunderstanding of the self as the body and the mind and the intelligence. And if you keep on affirming this identification with the gross and subtle bodies, how can you realize or how can you recognize the actual self, which is that which is aware of all these things? You have to make very certain within your own self, and the next verses are going to describe this process, the next few verses of Vakivriti, that you have to ascertain within yourself that you are the one who is aware of all these different things, the intelligence, the mind, the thoughts, the ego, the desires, the body, the bodily energies, uh, the prana, and all of the senses and sense organs and their objects. You are the one who is aware of these things. Only you are not the body or the mind or any of the other things that you are aware of. The seer is separate from the scene and can never become the scene. It's just like a, a mirror. A mirror never becomes that which is reflected in it. It only temporarily adopts those qualities in order to furnish a reflection. And the same is true of the self. The self apparently takes on the qualities of the things that it is aware of. But actually, it is never conditioned. It is never changed. It is only itself. And that self is without qualities, without a body, without a mind, without thoughts, without intelligence, even without consciousness. All these are superimposed on it from outside. And because we allow this superimposition, we even believe in it. We think that it's true. 
we remain in illusion, in unenlightenment, in conditioned consciousness, in suffering. Because all of these perceptions, all of these identifications lead to suffering due to repeated birth and death, samsara. So the way out of this whole trap is to simply distinguish by discrimination between the seer and the seen. That is the secret of enlightenment. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.